Hey guys, glad you're joining again this week. We are going to talk some more uh, at midweek this week about in the book of Mark about what it means to be a true disciple, what it means to be a true disciple. And last week, if you haven't seen that one, go back and pick it up. But we have a true disciple. We talked about honor Jesus with real worship. It means that we um, we say and do the right things. Um, and, 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 but we're not just doing it on the outside, but we're doing it on the inside. We, we're not just going through the motions, but it is a heart, um, felt thing that we're doing. Uh, we talked about that. What we think matters, um, talked about how Jesus was telling us that our thoughts lead us toward either following the spirit or following our sinful nature. And so we talked a little bit about what that means. And as a true disciples, we are not following a set of rules, but we are following Jesus as a relationship with him. Um, When we are a true disciple, we have a relationship with Jesus. And instead of following a set of rules that we hear as right or wrong, we are in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, to know how to live, we have to know his word. And so um, that's what this, this is about. It's about reading scripture and knowing what Jesus says and how to live it out. And so uh, we want you to be a part of that. We want you to come along with us uh, on this journey. And so um, today, what we're going to talk about this week, we're going to be looking at a follow-up idea about having a relationship with Jesus. What does it mean that we um, have this relationship with him and and do what Jesus asked us to do? Uh, we, we have to deny ourselves, which means we have to not do what we want to do, but what Jesus wants to do. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We, I want to take just a minute um, and read Mark 8 for you. Th- these verses start in verse 31. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to Mark 8 and then turn to verse 31, and we're going to be reading down through there, okay? So 31 um, talks about how Jesus was going to have to die and suffer and for our sins, right? He died and suffered for our sins, and he's telling the disciples this. And he's also telling the disciples that he's going to be raised again in three days. They tend not to hear that part, um, that Jesus was going to be raised again in three days. All they hear is that he's going to suffer and he's going to die, and that he's going to be killed. And um, and they didn't like that, of course. They, they loved Jesus, and they didn't want him to die But also they believed that their Messiah was a conquering king, that he was going to come in and change the world from uh, from all of the leadership aspects, that he was not going to suffer and die like a servant would. And so they just had a misunderstanding about what Jesus was there for. Even now, after they've been with Jesus, they know he's the Messiah. Peter, who's fixing to say some things, he's even told them in the verses before this that he is Christ, the Messiah. The Holy Spirit has led him to say that. And the disciples have pledged their allegiance to Jesus. And now he's going to say these words to him. And so I want you to listen to this. Mark 8, um, verse 31. It says, Then he began to teach them that it was necessary, which means it was going to happen, for the Son of Man to suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed, and raised again on the third day. All right, so that's what I just told you about. He spoke these words. He spoke openly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, which means he began to talk sternly to Jesus and say, you're wrong, Jesus. But turning around and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking about God's concerns but about human concerns. All right, so before we go on, I want to just take that and break it down for you. So Jesus basically tells his disciples whom he loved, he loves them, hey, I'm going to have to suffer. I'm going to have to die. And he doesn't tell them at this point that it's a cross, but he's fixing to, all right, that he's going to have to die and that he is going to be raised again. And they they missed out on that. They missed it. They just didn't want him to die and didn't want to suffer, uh, him to suffer. And so, Peter is saying, Lord, do you understand what you're saying? You know, you're not going along with our plan. (laughs) He says, you're going to have to, you're not going to suffer and die. And Jesus tells him, 
You are thinking like Satan, not like God. Now, those are, those are really harsh words, okay? Jesus gets in Peter's face. He rebukes him. He says, you are not thinking like God right now. I have to do what God tells me to do, and this is what God has told me to do. And if, if you want me to do opposite of that, then you're thinking like Satan would think. And, and man, he just goes, oh, Peter... You know, I'm sure he was taken back by it. He didn't, he didn't want to be um, doing anything in that manner. And so Jesus pulls him in and he wants to describe a little bit more about what they're having to do, what they're going to do. And he goes on, and this is in verse 34, if you're still following, chapter 8, verse 34. It says, calling the crowds along with his disciples. You know, these are people who are following Jesus. A lot of them basically for the miracles that Jesus was doing, right? He was doing miracles and they knew it and they followed along with him. But some that are true believers in who Jesus are. So this is the crowds that are following him and his disciples, which we know are following him because they love him and because they believe in him. But here's what he says to them, calling them together. If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me and the gospel will save it. For what good, I'm sorry, for what does it benefit someone to gain the whole world and yet lose his life? What can anyone give in exchange for his life? Now, I'm going to tell you about some principles here in just a second, but I just want to break that down for you. If anyone comes after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross. That was a, oh my gosh, that was a bombshell that he let off. He, 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 opened, um, he opens up telling Peter that you're acting like Satan, and now he's telling his disciples, if you want to follow me, if you truly want to be my disciples, you're going to have to deny yourself, which means put everything that you want on the back, right? Don't do what you want, but do what Jesus wants. And then he says, you're going to have to take up your cross. And to them... What that meant was the cross was a symbol of suffering and death. We've talked about this before. The Romans would, would nail people to the cross, and it was a, a cruel, cruel punishment, worse than anything we have today. And they would, they would nail them there, and they would be there for a long time, and Jesus was going to have to suffer that for us. And Jesus now is telling them, if you want to follow me, you're going to have to not do what you want to do, do what I want to do, but you also are going to have to suffer some in your life. And this was very, very real for them in that moment um, because they were people were dying around them on the cross all the time. So um, Jesus is saying, follow me. If you want to gain your life, you have to lose it for my sake. Um, so what are the things that we can pull out of there? What are the principles that we can pull out of there? Some things we can understand. Number one is this. Uh, we must surrender or give ourselves to everything completely to Jesus. We must surrender ourselves completely to Jesus. It means that we don't get to do what we want to do. We do what Jesus wants us to do, right? Um, we, we, just, we don't get to hold on to anger in our lives. We don't get to hold on and do what we want to do, but we live for Jesus. All right, number two, we must identify with him in suffering and death, which means he said, I'm going to die on the cross, and that means that you, to them, literally, some of them had to die on a cross as well. For us, what that means is spiritually, we have to die on the cross. We have to give up what we want, and we have to die to self and let Jesus guide us. Now, I want to tell you this right here, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to scare you. I know you're, you guys haven't probably thought of this, but there are people around the world that have to die for their faith. They die every day for believing in Jesus. Now, we in the United States, we don't have to suffer those things and um, right now. And so when we talk about identifying with his suffering and death, we may look at it in a different thing, like we may lose friends. Um, we feel like that's suffering. We may um, lose family that doesn't, doesn't believe us anymore or, or doesn't want to have anything to do with us. That We look at that as suffering, but there are people across the world that have to lose their life. Um, and, and Jesus may be calling one of us to go on a mission field and be in a place where um, things are not as easy. I hope so. I hope you follow Jesus with everything that you are. Number three, 
It says, uh, the last one is, we must follow Jesus wherever he leads and we must do his will. It means do what Jesus wants us to do. Now that's a lot. Even as adults, we have a problem understanding all those things. Okay, I want to break it down for you as simply as I can. There's a lot in here. And this is just as simple as I can put it as we finish today. Follow Jesus with everything that you say, you do, and believe. It means we give up what we want and we do what Jesus wants for us in our life. That's what it means to take up your cross. I love you guys. I hope that you have found Jesus in your life and that you have accepted him and you have that relationship. Uh, if you haven't yet, realize that Jesus loves you. For the, what we're talking about, he died on the cross. He died on the cross for your sin, for your sin. He paid the price so that you can know Jesus. And if you accept him and you say, I want to live for you forever and believe that Jesus died on the cross for you, believe it in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord then you can be saved as well. I love you. I'm glad you're with us today. Uh, don't forget life groups, okay? We're, we're back in life groups uh, in person. Um, so kids, come check it out. Hope you bring your parents as well. See you later. Bye.